Do you have some questions for me? What is going down, friends? Rob Pelton here coming to you with my 4,000 subscriber Ask Me Anything. So a couple weeks ago, I dropped a video asking you to ask me questions, anything that you want to know. And this is to commemorate my 4,000 subscriber uh, milestone. Now, I know in the world of YouTube, 4,000 isn't a lot, but for me, 4,000 people, I don't see 4,000 people watching my videos, though. So, hey, 4,000 people, start watching my, my stuff. So a huge thank you to all of you for supporting the channel uh, up to this point so far. I greatly appreciate it. I still have plans to keep producing content and, and just having fun doing this whole thing. Well, let's jump right in to the questions. First one from Kevin D. Congrats on 4K. Thank you very much, Kevin. I appreciate it. If I could, which YouTube fellow celebrity, fellow celebrity? I'm not a celebrity. I'm just a guy with a... Who would I trade lives with? Well, that's a very, very good question because there's a lot of people who do kind of what I do, but on a much larger scale, right? There's people like like Darwin, guys like Craig Adams and, and Jupiter Hikes, these kinds of channels I, I look up to because they've really taken this, this lifestyle and made it their own. They went all in on it and they're making a living and they're having a, a blast traveling the world, you know, doing different trips and hiking and, and just, just really in it. You know, whereas me, you know, I'm still working, you know, a job. I'm, I'm still at the daily grind and I do these trips as much as possible. So to those guys like Craig Adams and Darwin and, and Jupiter, um, any one of those, um, I'd still like to be me because frankly, I'm better looking. But I would love to go all in on this and, and make, you know, creating content a full-time gig. That would be fantastic. Um, it's just going to take a little bit more work on my part. But yeah, I, I would totally dive in and, and do what they do for sure. Lily Mack, she asks, do I have any upcoming bike packing trips for warmer weather? Yeah, it's still February, March is not too far away, which means spring, which means warmer weather. Uh, I do have some bike packing trips. There's a really big one I wanna try to tackle that's gonna come down to scheduling. Um, there's another one down in Arkansas I'd like to do as well. Um, nothing super solid yet. Um, they're still on that one day list and I gotta I gotta quickly move them to the actual to do list so yes there's gonna be more bike packing trips this summer for sure specifically I can't tell you yet because I don't know SA from NC I see you comment a lot of my videos I thank you very much for asking the question uh, do I have any uh, new trails on my short list for 2022 yeah, there's always going to be spear hiking trail and some of the local ones, but I'd like to check out a little bit more uh, in the Dakotas because the Dakotas aren't that far away. Maybe a few more things out in Wisconsin too. So go a little east, a little west. Pictured Rocks, for instance, one of the national lake shores along Lake Superior. Haven't been there. It looks amazing. I know a lot of people have done it. Um, and then like Centennial Trail out in, in South Dakota, you know, things like that. And he also says, we think you need to wander down to the Carolinas. Actually, yes, the Foothills Trail. I've been eyeing that as well. I think that's something I could do a through hike on. So if anyone has some information on the Foothills Trail, and maybe you want to be a tour guide or give me some tips and tricks and best times to get down there, I would love that because I would love to get down to the Carolinas, especially this time of year. D-Rock Outdoors, congrats on 4,000 subs. Thank you again very much. What's the best trail food you've had? So I've been on a lot of trails. I've eaten a lot of food on trail. One of the best meals I've had was actually on a canoe trip in the Boundary Waters. Uh, so instead of a hiking trail, it was a canoe trail, right? Um, a buddy of mine, his name is Quaka. Quaka, if you're watching, what's up, man? He brought a Dutch oven. And for breakfast on like the second or third morning, he made this egg bake quiche thing, right? It was basically hash browns and sausage. Uh, there may have been some bacon and onions in there, uh, cheese. So it was this like dense, rich food, but the kicker was it was topped with a cinnamon roll. So they're cinnamon rolls. And that, that combination of the savory and the salty and the sweet was out of this world. I haven't attempted to remake that, um, but I would like to. So that egg bake, cinnamon roll thing, out of this world. Best trail food I've had. Mr. Backpacking with Buckley. What's my favorite meat? Let's just go easy and safe, okay? It's ribeye. Why? Because it's fatty and juicy and just delicious. And I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, this one. This one, I love this question. From Gary Collins. Gary, what's happening, man? Gary asks me, if you went six months without buying any gear, not even a single pair of socks, 
would you justify buying something just for the satisfaction of getting new gear, even though you did not need it? Yes. Pete Hikensale asks a question. Uh, he says, kudos, Rob, for the 4,000. Thank you. You are a part of the 4,000, and I appreciate you. Um, he's, he's wondering when I'm going to come out to the Northeast, like hike some of Maine, like I don't know, maybe on the AT or something like that. I would love to come to the Northeast. I, I've gotten a couple of questions like that over the years. Um, I don't throw out an invite. I'd love to hop on a plane or a car and just zip out to the East Coast. Pete, let's do something. Cash Max Trail Time. What is happening? What was your driving force behind making your channel? I essentially made my channel because I was doing some traveling and I wanted to document it. I went to Nepal and that's where and I was there for three months and I, and I recorded the different hikes I did there. And from there, I realized it was a good way to archive what I do. And then I fell in love with just the, the creativity and the making of the videos. Um, I did go to school for graphics and video editing, so I had some history there. I, I've been an artist since I was a kid as well. Um, but just just the sheer fact of I'm, I'm able to capture all this on film and then come back and, and rewatch it, share it with others 10 years, 20 years down the road. Uh, also asks, how did you keep it growing? Honestly, growth for this channel has never been the biggest priority for me. I just kept churning out videos on a consistent basis and uh, it's, it seems like uh, people liked what I was doing and I just kept going. Uh, if it ended up no one watching my videos, would I still film? Probably, because I still want to see the stuff that I've done and the stuff I was capable of. So, consistency and just doing it. If you're looking to grow your channel, you, you just got to do it. There's no shortcut to anything. Uh, you just have to fall in love with the process of becoming big, and maybe one day I'll be big. I don't know. Nick's fan says, happy 4K. Nick's fan. Thank you. Backpacking with Jason, sir. Mr. Wah, thanks for, thanks for the question. I appreciate it. Congrats on the 4K. Thank you, brother. I think you're really damn close yourself. Did you think the RRG, did I think the Red River Gorge in Kentucky would look like that? No. To me, it reminded me like of the Grand Canyon on a much smaller, on a much smaller scale. I mean, with the sheer cliffs and the Red River Gorge is pretty cool. I did not expect that from Kentucky. Uh, rock scrambles, ropes and overlooks and arches. The Red River Gorge, that's how it was. There was scrambles down rocks, scaling these different cliff faces, using ropes to climb up, climb up cliff faces. It has so much diversity. That was one of my favorite trips. And all the people that was on that trip, I mean, just awesome people, you know, fellow YouTubers. But the gorge, you guys got something special in Kentucky. Chuck Wagon. What's happening, Chucker? Chuck Wagon, mule, if you guys don't know. He just went on a, on a Boundary Waters trip with us. Um, he says, excellent content. Thank you, man. I, I appreciate it. Um, but his question for me is if I were to insert an O in the middle of my name, uh, would my subs double overnight? Yes? No. No. Yes. Mary McCallum, hi, I see you popping in on the comments as well. Thank you for all your support uh, over, the, over the years, I appreciate it. Uh, Mary asks if I have any big plans for 2022. Um, what trips do I ha have planned for 2022? As of right now, um, there's a tentative plan to go to Peru. That, that plan to hike the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu, that's been postponed because of the, the, the pandemic and everything like that, so I hope to get there this year. Um, I do plan on going I mentioned this before, I'll probably hit some of the Centennial Trail, I'll probably hit down to Arkansas, and then, you know, again, uh, some stuff out in Wisconsin. Um, but I would like to get out east a lot more, too. Uh, Foothills Trail, I'd like to get out to Utah or California. There's so much I want to do, there's just not much time, uh, or funds, really. But um, I'm getting my plans for this year kind of together now, so I'll have more concrete stuff as it comes. Some of these trips are very impromptu, and I see the opportunities, and I just kind of whisk away. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of cool like that. So, thanks for the question, Mary. Amorphous Blob. Thanks for the question. You and Midwest Backpacker seem to be pretty good friends. How did we meet? So, Midwest Backpacker, Jeremy LaCroix. We met through a Facebook group hang, a hammock hang, down in southern Minnesota. Uh, we were part of this hammock group on Facebook 
you know, we both agreed to go on this, this group hang and we met there and we realized how stupid each other was and we got along and we planned a trip together, made it happen and we just kind of went from there. So Jeremy's Jeremy, me is me and together we're both really stupid. <laughs> Thanks for the question. W-H-B-J-R. I don't know what that stands for. Let me know. I'm, I'm very, very curious. What do I do for sweaty feet? Um, even with $31 wool socks, uh, my feet get cold. Uh, even with 400 grams insulation boots. So I imagine you're talking for cold weather. Obviously, not, you're not for summer. Um, do I bring uh, three changes of socks, powder, what have you? What I do, depending on what you're doing, if you're going to do trails, if you do a lot of camp time, there's a bunch of different things you can do. Extra pair of socks are going to be 100% your friend because uh, you're going to want to get those off, especially if you're at camp and put on dry socks. Now, if you're going to have a long hike into a camp spot in the wintertime and you're going to spend time at camp, bring an extra pair of boots. Uh, wear some lighter boots on the way in. That way, if they're sweaty, it's no problem. You get to camp, cool down, relax, change your socks, and get into warmer, drier boots. That right there is going to do a lot for you. Um, just make sure whatever boots you have, their size is a little bit bigger to give you a lot of room. If, if your boots are too constricted, uh, it, it's going um, to constrict your feet and your feet will get cold. So just make sure you have wiggle room. And yeah, bring socks, wool socks. Salmond, Salmond Outdoors, congrats on the 4K. Thank you, brother. I really appreciate it. If I could make the perfect pizza, what would I put on it? I'm a very, very easy going guy when it comes to food. Pizza, very easy. Uh, a good crispy crust. Cheese, extra cheese, maybe a couple of different cheeses, pepperoni, make it easy. Maybe sometimes bacon, sometimes onion, sometimes sausage, but a really good pepperoni pizza with nice thick pepperoni that's been overcooked a little bit. That's a pretty good pizza to me. Justin Anderson, his question for me is, what is the most overrated and underrated piece of gear? Now obviously, I have a lot of gear and there's a lot of gear that goes into trips, but if I were to boil it down just for a few things, I would say one of the most underrated pieces of gear is something super simple, and I think everyone should have. A lot of people try to make substitutes for it, but seriously, something as simple as a food bag or a bear bag. Uh, when you're at camp, depending on where you are, you're, you're supposed to hang your food, get them out of the way of critters, bears, things like that, depending on where you are. A lot of people try to use stuff sacks for this. I don't use stuff sacks, but these bags, this is made by Hilltop Packs, uh, custom made, it was printed for me. I got a brand new one that's a little bit bigger, again, custom printed. These bear bags, they're waterproof. Not only, yeah, do they hold food for your gear, but they're waterproof, so you can put other gear in here. Uh, and this always rides to the top of your pack as well, so you can put your keys, wallet, and things like that in here as well. But these bags are, they're, they're extremely, extremely useful for me, because if you had to, you could put dry clothes in here too, extra socks, anything like that, anything you think you may need. But these simple little things, something specifically for your food, is amazing. It keeps the odors, any leakage, anything like that inside the bag. And these are lightweight and get them custom printed. You can actually get this bag for yourself right now. So underrated are our food bags and better yet, custom food bags. Overrated piece of gear. And this is a recent addition. This is the Outdoor Vitals Ventus hoodie. It's a lightly insulated hoodie, got a lot of technology, it's lightweight. Um, the warmth to weight ratio, it, it, it's a great jacket, it, it is, but it's $180. For $180, this thing is extremely overrated. Fight me. All right, let's kind of crush through a couple of here, and I, I got the questions all printed out right here, so I may glance at those every once in a while. Love to wander. Congrats on 4K, thank you very much. What is your dream adventure? Stay safe and hope for many more. Thank you very much. My dream adventure. Uh, I would love to go on a big, big hike, whether it's abroad, like the Camino de Santiago, or even the AT or PCT. I would love to do something like that, you know. Or I would love to get a van, build it out, and travel the U.S. or 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 go to New Zealand and, and get a van there and do some tramping around the whole country. There's a lot of big, grand things um, that I would love to do. Um, those are unfortunately on my one-day list, and, and I hope to move them to my actual to-do list. Um, but a man can dream, <laughs> but I'm working towards uh, adventures every day at least. Andy Parrish, what's up Andy? I was recently on Andy's live stream. If you guys don't know Andy Parrish Outdoors, check him out. Uh, he asks, "Is what's been my favorite post-hike meal? Depending on the hike, especially if it's a multi-day high mileage hike, 
it doesn't matter what I eat if I go to a restaurant after after a trip because everything tastes amazing after days and days of dehydrated meals. Um, but a really good burger with bacon and good cheese is amazing. A really good pizza, tacos. I mean, pretty much any actual food post hike is gonna be my favorite. Anita B. Anita B's got a lot of questions for me. So Anita, if you're watching, thank you very much. I'm gonna go through these uh, kind of line by line here. Um, hello from New Mexico. Well, hello from Minnesota. Am I crafty? What do you make? Please show your creations. Um, growing up, I was an artist, but am I crafty? You know, am I like a, uh, like a DIYer? Not really, um, you know, no Pinterest or anything like that, but I've made some things on my own. Um, you know, I kind of constructed this little survival necklace. I made all the braids and kind of put this thing together. You know, it's kind of silly um, and I never use it, but it, it hangs on one of my shelves and it looks cool. Um, I've made this fire bag. This is actually deer leather. This is a deer that I harvested back in 2016 and I had it tanned and I constructed this fire bag, you know, and it carries, you know, all my little tinders and fire starters and things like that. Uh, leather cordage, I cut a little uh, wooden toggle. Uh, so I've, I've made this and then every once in a while, um, if I have some camp time and I, and I wanna just kinda hang out and chill, I'll carve spoons every once in a while. Carving is just one of those pastimes where you can sit there in silence and work on something and, and, and think deeply about something uh, while creating a pretty cool carving, a spoon, uh, all the while trying not to slice your thumb. So, um, but these are a few things that I've made. Uh, she also asks, do I have any venison recipes? Uh, no, not really, other than getting a good tenderloin with a, with a good like rub on it and, uh, and it's searing the outside and serving it uh, uh, medium rare uh, on, on a grill. Uh, that, that's as basic as it gets and, and it doesn't need to be much more than that for venison. I'm always looking for books to read. Uh, any favorites? Uh, yeah, there, there's a few books that I've read recently that I really like and I've mentioned these before. Here's some of my favorite books, Anita. The Alchemist by Paolo Coelho. Uh, it, it's an easy read, it's a good story, but there's like a bigger life lesson and, and I like books like that. So The Alchemist is one. Another one, also an easy read called The Timekeeper. Again, a bigger picture story where it makes you think about you know, the bigger picture in life. And then most recently, I just read Chop Wood, Carry Water. This is not a book on how to chop wood and how to carry water. There's actually, uh, it, it, it's, it's a story that follows a guy, but it basically shows you how you should fall in love with the process of being great not falling in love with just being great because you have to go through the process in order to get to that end goal, right? You don't just, you don't just go to the end. Um, and by, by doing the process and accepting what it takes to get there and loving that process is, is what inherently makes you great. So uh, Joshua, Metcalf, Chopwood, Carry Water, those are some of my favorite books currently. I'm always looking for tunes. Please share your favorite playlist. I really don't have a playlist. I really don't have a Spotify. I listen to Pandora. You know, a lot of country or, or uh, hiking with distortion channel on Pandora, some pretty good tunes. Um, you know, I'll listen to some Post Malone, I'll listen to country, I'll listen to hip hop, uh, just whatever, whatever the mood, you know, hits me, so. Who influenced me to be outdoorsy? Someone in my family, friends. So my dad grew up in Minnesota here and he was always an outdoorsman, fishing, hunting, that kind of thing. And I followed in step with that. Uh, and then he passed, uh, you know, back in 04. And I, and I stayed with hunting for a little while, but then I transitioned out of that and started doing more backpacking and, and, uh, um, and camping and things like that. Because when you're camping and hunting, or camping and hiking, you can be loud and crazy and you can smell and, and you don't have to kill anything. Even though I, I love hunting, um, but there's just more freedoms um, with, with camping and hiking. And plus, you know, I, I really enjoy it. Uh, it. I'm still outside. So, Anita, thanks for the questions. Shane B. What's up, Shane? I've, I've actually uh, spent a little bit of time with Shane. Uh, he asked if I would do ragbri. What's ragbri? It's basically kind of like a relay race that spans all of, um, on a bicycle, all of Iowa. Um, yeah, it sounds cool. I don't know, I don't really know a lot about it, but something like that I would be down to do. Um, I just would just need to find out what, what that actually is. And then he also asked when we're doing the next episode of Chewing the Fat. We actually just dropped an episode of Chewing the Fat, me and Midwest Backpacker. We got a few more coming up if you're interested. Walt Brim. Uh, I have most of your question here. Some of it got, it got cut off. Um, 
and thanks for uh, watching the videos over the years. A few questions, if you will. What's your go-to really cold glove? I believe it, it cut off right there, and, 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 I, and for some reason I can't find it. But my go-to cold weather glove, quite honestly, is just a leather glove, a, a fleece-lined insulated leather glove. I've tried, you know, uh, choppers or mittens. I've tried waterproof, all kinds of stuff. And I always go back to just these from trekking out, from camp chores. They're really easy to slip on, really easy to slip off. Uh, they're not waterproof, they do get soaked, but you know, I can put them over a fire and they dry out. Um, these are just have been my, my go-to all-around gloves, even at 30 below zero. That's me. Um, that's me. Larry King asks, have you, have you or do you plan on hiking the AT, the Appalachian Trail? Um, I haven't hiked the Appalachian Trail. I haven't been on the trail at all. Would I like to? Yeah, I would. Uh, you know, especially if life allowed me to do that, I would love to hike the whole AT, or, or even I, if I can get away for some sections. So, um, if I make a trip out east, yeah, I would love to hit a couple sections. You know, the whites or any of that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I'd like to do it. Scott Ryan asks if I ever used a gathered end hammock before using my Ridge Runner hammock. My Ridge Runner hammock is not a traditional hammock; it's a it's a spreader bar. Uh, I have not. Uh, uh, the Ridge Runner was like one of my first hammocks. I never. I have. All my experience have been with a Ridge Runner, except for this last year where I bought a gathered in hammock, like a traditional hammock. I bought that from Superior Gear, where the underquilt is actually built in. And, and it's been great, it's a great hammock. And then when I did switch back to the Ridge Runner, the Ridge Runner was way, way more comfortable. The, the gathered in hammocks and the bridge hammocks have their merits. At the end of the day, for comfort, uh, the Ridge Runner is, 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 is it for me, for comfort. Isaiah Huntosh, why do I love you so much? because I'm a sexy beast. Me outside, bucket list trip, bucket list trip. Uh, and gear you would love to have, but you can't afford. Well, bucket list trip, um, I keep mentioning uh, Scotland, love to do some trips out there, Ireland, anything like that in Europe, I think would be awesome. Um, any of those would be bucket list for me. And as far as gear that I can't afford, there's way too much. Uh, to go into this video. I may make a whole separate video of gear I would like but I can't afford. Because I have a lot of gear and there's always more gear, right? Adventures with Beckett Zena. What's up Beckett, man? It's been a little while. Uh, do I plan on coming back to Canada? Hiking the Sleeping Giant? Uh, yeah, man. Uh, the Canadian border and the US border hasn't been great as of late but we'd love to come back up there and, and hike the Giant again and hang out with you and Zena. You know, go, go see Toots and all those guys up there. So yeah, we'd love to, man. Absolutely. Grateful Trekker. Congratulations 4K. Thank you. Um, what lake or group of lake is your favorite to, whoa, to hike in the BWCA? I've taken a few trips in the BWCA, you know, uh, hiking trips, Angleworm, uh, Hegeman Lake, those kinds of things. Um, some of the earlier days of the Boundary Waters, um, Snowbank Lake, the things are right around there. Um, those are to, to name a few. Um, I haven't spent a lot of time in the Boundary Waters. I'd like to change that, uh, but from my limited knowledge, where I've been is amazing. You can almost throw a dart to the Boundary Waters and that place is gonna be awesome. Uh, Perry Kerr asks, what's a good snowshoe? A lot of it depends on what you're doing. If it's flat, if it's hilly, you know, that kind of thing. I have a pair of MSRs, Lightnings, Ascents. Those are really good for all kinds of terrain. They're expensive, but, but they're good. Um, if you're gonna be in deep snow, any snowshoe is gonna beat a knot having a snowshoe. Bobby Meyer, miss ya, congrats. Bobby Meyer, I miss you, and congrats. Angela Smith, what's up Angela? Uh, congrats on the 4K, thank you. I'm loving all of the videos and the content, I really appreciate that. What are your plans for the warmer months? Backpacking trips, bike packing trips, hopefully some out of state. Looking for opportunities to go elsewhere in the US, Canada, anywhere. Uh, any thoughts on Pictured Rocks? Yes, Pictured Rocks is on my list. I'd love to head out there. Um, I, I don't have any set plans to go, but if anyone's going to Pictured Rocks and they don't mind me coming along and being annoying, let me know, I'd love to go. Mike Ghost, what's up Mike? Uh, when are we gonna be hiking together again? Whenever, man, just say the word. If we can make it happen, Mike, let's make it happen. Long Winters uh, asks, average day in non-winter. Average terrain, what would be an average distance I would like to hike? I prefer to hike and not too long, not too short. On an average daily trip, 12 miles, 12 to 15 miles is ideal for me. It gives me enough trail time to really you know, get some mileage in, but it also gets me to camp early enough 
so I can enjoy camp time. Can I do 20, 25 miles a day? Yes. Do I prefer it? No. 12 to 15 is what I like. Buckman840 asks, have you ever taken a uh, Boundary Waters or Quetico uh, paddling trip? Yeah, I have. I, I've been to the, the, the Boundary Waters. I've taken a few paddling trips out there. Fantastic. Never been to Quetico. Uh, for those who, you, of you who don't know what Quetico is, it's kind of like the Boundary Waters, but in Canada, I believe. I've been to Maine on, on paddling trips. I've been to a lot of places uh, in canoes, and, and I love it. But it's just one more thing for me to do, right? I, there's only so much time in the year for me to do things. But I would love to go on paddling trips, backpacking trips, uh, snowshoeing trips, uh, trips abroad. There just need, there needs to be more time. <laughs> and last question. From Blaine Paul Bunyan 25. <sighs> Love the channel, Rob. Thanks, brother. Congrats on the 4K. My question for you is what, are the, what is the gear item you think is most essential in the winter time and what piece is most essential in the summertime? There's a lot of gear that can make or break a trip. And if I were just to kind of boil it down to just a couple of them, because there's a lot. In the summertime, when I'm hiking longer days, especially in warmer weather, I sweat a lot. And so sweat management off of my bald head is, is, is kind of important. I don't wear a buff, I don't wear a stocking cap, I don't wear a baseball hat. I wear an Outdoor Research Swift hat. It's like a runner's hat, essentially. It's, uh, it, it's very moisture wicking, it dries fast, it's, uh, it's got full ventilation on the whole thing. So this thing, I can sweat and sweat and sweat. This allows the sweat to, to be uh, removed from my scalp and then you know it can, it can dissipate and evaporate. Without this, the sweat would be in my eyes, it'd be burning, it would be a huge mess. With this, this helps that problem for me a lot because I'm bald. And the most essential piece of gear for winter time, again, there's a lot of stuff, but I found that in winter time, you can deal with a lot of things. One of them isn't cold feet. So for cold feet, the Arctic Steger Mucklux, without a doubt, is the best thing you can buy for a winter trip, especially when it's cold, cold, cold. So there it is. And that does it. 4,000 subscriber, question and answer, ask me anything. Thank you for everyone who submitted a question. I hope I answered it okay. And for those of you, if I missed your question, I apologize. But I, I just want to say thanks again for supporting me, supporting the channel. And I look forward to doing more. And hopefully this does get bigger and better. But that's it. Time to go home. Back to reality again. Appreciate you watching. Make sure you get out on trail. See you in the next one.